called the title of the Pledge of Allegiance. The pledge was created in 1892 by Francis Bellamy. His goal was to create something short and easy to remember. The purpose of the pledge was to help American children learn to love and their country and carry on the principles of the Constitution. The pledge continued to gain pop popularity and was recognized by Congress on June 27, 1942. In 1954, the words under God were added by Congress and have not been changed ever since. that were the first flowers to grow in the churned up earth of the soldiers' graves. The Remembrance Poppy is an artificial flower which has been used since 1921. These flowers are often seen around Memorial Day. First graders created this artwork titled The Eagle. The American Bald Eagle was adopted as the official bird emblem of the United States of America in 1782. The eagle is known for its majestic beauty, great strength, and long life, and because it's native to North America. The bald eagle is both a national bird and national animal in the United States of America. Did you know that their original choice for America's national symbol was not the bald eagle? Ben Franklin argued it to be a turkey. Second graders created this artwork titled The Stars and Stripes. The American flag consists of 13 red and white stripes, which represent the original 13 colonies. The flag's 50 stars stand for the 50 states that make up our country. In, the in 1977, the House represented about the flag. Examples of stars represent the earth and the rain of spires of the moon. And the stripes represent the rays of the sun. And the flag of the United States is often called Star and Stripes. Today's a special day in Mr. Noah's fourth grade class. Let's take a peek inside and see what they're learning about. Come with me. Class, 
This month has a special holiday, which we honor brave men and women who serve our country. Do you know what holiday I'm talking about? Yes, Emily. Are you talking about Thanksgiving? The pilgrims are brave when they travel to a new country. That is true. The pilgrims were brave. The group of people I'm talking about traveled to different countries as well, but this group also helps keep us safe. Yes, Eileen? Are you talking about policemen? They keep us safe. Yes, policemen are brave and keep us and our cities safe. This group keeps our country safe. Keep thinking, class. Yes, Peyton? Are you talking about soldiers and sailors? They were brave and keep our country safe. You, you must be talking about Veterans Day. My grandpa fought in the war and he is a veteran. You got it. I'm talking about the brave men and women who are currently soldiers or who were soldiers in the past. They are called veterans. Anyone who has served in the military is a veteran. Do you know how many branches of the military there are? Yes, Andrew? I think there are six branches. There's the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, and the National Guard. Nice job! What are some ways we can honor veterans on Veterans Day? Yes, Georgia? We can join in with the rest of the, rest of the country and observe a moment of silence at 11-11 to honor all veterans past and present. Yes, that is a beautiful thing we can all do. What is another way? Yes, Rhea? My family attends a special mass. Then we go put flowers on my grandpa Rock's grave. He died in the war. That is a wonderful way to honor his memory. Our class is going to do something special, too. We are going to write letters to some veterans thanking them for their service to our country and send them in the mail. Raise your hand if you know someone in your family who has served in our country. Wow, that's a lot. Before I send you off to write, let's stand as a class and say this sparkle for all the great men and women who serve our country. In the name of the Father, Father Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Lord, today we honor our veterans, worthy men and women, who gave their best when they were called upon to serve and protect their country. We respect them, we thank them, we honor them, we are proud of them. We pray that you will watch over these special people and bless them with peace and happiness. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you for coming to Mr. Noah's class with me. Happy Veterans Day to all the veterans watching this. We thank you for your service and sacrifice. Here in fifth grade, we had a few questions about Veterans Day, so we did some research. We'd like to share our learning with you. Veterans Day is spelled without an apostrophe. That's because it rec doesn't belong to one any veteran or group of veterans. It recognizes all veterans. Veteran Day. Veterans Day honors all who have served our country in war or peace, dead or alive, although it is largely intended to thank living veterans for their sacrifices. Canada and Australia also honor veterans on November 11th, although they call the holiday Remembrance Day. So how did Veterans Day become a national holiday? We're so glad you asked. November 11th, 1918. On the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918, an armistice, or halt to hostilities between the nations involved in the First World War was called. November 11th, 1919. On the first anniversary of the armistice, President Woodrow Wilson delivered a speech to the nation reflecting on the heroism of those who had died in service to their country. Congress called an official observance of veterans on November 11th, and President Colin Coolidge adopted a resolution in response. May 13, 1938, a Congressional Act was approved 
making the 11th of November each year a legal holiday named Armistice Day. Given Boots, a World War II veteran from Alabama suggested the idea of expanding Armistice Day to include all veterans on national wars, not just those who had died in the Great War. He led a delegation to General Eisenhower, who was, who was in support of the idea. Once Eisenhower became president, he signed a bill into law that changed Armistice Day to Veterans Day. The National Veterans Award was also established. Nineteen seventy one. Veterans Day was moved from November eleventh to the fourth Monday of October. In accordance with the Uniform Holiday Monday Act, nineteen seventy eight. The holiday was moved back to November 11, with the understanding that if the date falls on a Saturday or Sunday, then organizations that celebrate the holiday will formally observe it on the adjacent Friday or Monday, respectively. Third graders have interpreted created this artwork title, The Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty was given as a gift from France in 1886 on the 100-year anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. The Statue of Liberty has features that are symbolic. There are broken chains near the foot of the monument that symbolize the struggle for, for, that symbolize the struggle for freedom and the end of slavery. The torch is a symbol of enlightenment. The Statue of Liberty's torch lights the way to freedom and shows the path to liberty. The Statue of Liberty also represents friendship between nations has been a welcoming sight to immigrants or having my children. Both readers could have looked this at work titled The Salutes. The Salutes started a long time ago. In Roman times, a citizen who wanted to see a public official had to approach with his right hand raised to show that he did not hold a weapon. Knights in armor also used the salute. They raised their visors with the right hand when meeting a comrade. One of the most famous salutes was in 1963 when John F. Kennedy saluted his father's coffin near St. Matthew's Cathedral after the funeral mass in Washington. During the playing of the national anthem, all people were present in uniform, such as the military, police, and Cub Scouts, to render the military salute. All others should be present in face to leg and stand at attention with their right hand over their heart. A proper salute is a way to show respect to the people in the flag. Activities fifth graders created this artwork titled The Flag and the Eagle. The American flag is a symbol of freedom, liberty, and human rights. It is a symbol of our homeland and all that we believe in. The three colors used in the flag of the United States of America have come to be associated with a specific meaning. White stands for purity and innocence. Red represents hardiness and courage. Blue stands for vigilance, perseverance, and justice. And God bless our veterans in the land that we love. Happy Veterans Day. Veterans Day occurs on November 11th every year in the United States in honor of the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. At 11 o'clock a.m. on November 11, 1918, World War I, then called the Great War, came to an end. There are two national holidays in which we honor those who served in our military. Memorial Day and Veterans Day. These two can get mess, uh, confused for each other. Memorial Day is a time to remember those who gave their lives for our country, particularly in battle or from wounds they suffered in battle. Veterans Day honors all of those who have served a country in war or peace, dead or alive, although it is largely intended to thank living veterans for their sacrifices. Other countries celebrate veterans too. Great Britain, France, Australia, and Canada honor the veterans of World War I and World War II around each time this year. For example, both Canada and Australia observe Remembrance Day on November 11th, while Britain celebrates their own Remembrance Day on the Sunday that falls closest to November 11th. 
Not all veterans have fought in a war. Veterans are people who served our country honorably during war or peacetime for any amount of time. There are approximately 19.5 million veterans in the United States. The military men and women who serve and protect the U.S. come from all walks of life. They are parents, children, grandparents, friends, neighbors, and co-workers, and are an important part of our communities. 9% of veterans are women. That is approximately 2 million women. More than 9 million veterans are over the age of 65. This means that there are about 10 million veterans that are younger than 65. As of 2017, the top three states with the highest percentage of veterans were Alaska, Maine, and Montana. We can celebrate Veterans Day on this day every year, but we should celebrate them every day for the sacrifices they have made for our freedom. Thank you, veterans. There are symbols of the missing person table. This table is set for one. It is small, symbolizing the frailty of one prisoner alone against his oppressors. This table is round to show our everlasting concern for our missing military soldiers. The tablecloth is white, symbolizing the purity of their motives when answering the call to duty. The single red rose displayed in a vase reminds us of the families, loved ones, of our comrades in arms who keep the faith awaiting their return. The vase is tied with a red ribbon, a symbol for our continued determination to account for our missing. A slice of lemon on the bread plate is to remind us of the bitter fate of those captured and missing in a foreign land. A pinch of salt symbolizes the tears endured by those missing and their families who seek answers. The Bible represents the strength gained through faith to sustain those lost from our country, founded as one nation under God. A candlelight. The candle is lit, symbolizing the upward reach of their unconquerable spirit. The glass is inverted to symbolize their inability to share this evening's or morning's day toast. The chair is empty. They are missing. <laughs>